the story of how I made my own epoxy bag. Maybe you've seen this bag from the Caperni brand. They advertise this item as being 95% air. I don't know the specifics, I just noticed the design. They've got so many similar designs just with various materials like stone, wood and leather, basically everything. I couldn't sleep, obsessing about how to make my own epoxy bag. The important thing is that I have this wonderful tape, construction tape for walls on double-sided tape along with bendable glass. From cardboard, I cut this gift bag. I cut the shape I need and now, having already gone through the process, I realize I want a smaller handbag. Initially, I want another one with a silk effect and another even smaller one with white dried flowers in resin. Anyhow, back to the process. Cut out the cardboard base. Handle this step carefully with precision because this stage is responsible for 90% of the success of your bag or whatever item you want to create. I'll get a mold made of bending tape. This mold could be made of flexible glass or some kind of plastic strip. You can find options just like this in DIY stores. You can use thin bendable glass or thin plexiglass. The base, by the way, it's better to use a firm base, preferably choose orc glass. I use flexible glass which gave folds on the back side due to its softness, but these folds looked like fabric which was even cooler. However, next I'll create a silk effect and I'll go with orc glass as it requires less work when it comes to grinding and polishing. After sketching the shape, I attach my plaster with a hot glue gun. Using tape, it will serve as a shuttering for me and I create a boundary to prevent the resin from leaking. Here also, be very careful. Even the smallest bend will distort your shape, which will be visible in the end. Even when you are creating formwork for countertops with this particular tape or any other construction tape, try to do it as evenly and carefully as possible. Also, you can see I hold it before doing the second step, before attaching the other part, because the glue is hot. And it takes a few seconds, even up to a minute, for it to bond with the flexible glass and stop my capricious tape from going any further. Although it's flexible, it still wants to straighten up and lie flat at ease. It doesn't like being bent into such a shape. After gluing it with a hot gun, I go over it with a silicone sealant really thick on the edges. This is a really important step, guys. If you don't do this, the resin, especially for voluminous pouring, is liquid and will find any little hole to leak out. We don't want that, so we go through several stages. Just gluing with a hot gun isn't enough. You have to go over it with a silicone sealant. And now, besides the two main sides, I create a brace in the middle that will hold these two sides together. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Now I know how to do it right. I'm doing it wrong now. I made it very narrow because two parts have to be connected by a side plank They either have to go inside or the plank has to go in. The plank should be wide enough. I made it very narrow so it wouldn't be a practical bag, just a decor. I wanted it to be practical and it can perform not only the function of a bag but also the function of a vase and that's really cool because I will leave it in the studio for beautiful decor. Generally applicability is possible but the plank should be wide. Eventually you'll see I remade this plank and I made this first plank very thick so that it could not be bent. It was possible but I didn't even try to bend it because it's narrow. The plank also, I glue it on a hot gun, then I go to the sealants for my work. I use liquid resin transported from the company Resin Pro or Artsmola in Russia. This is Artsmola. If anything, a promo code for a discount on the Terum. I'm kneading in three cups. The first I had transparent resin, the second I paint stained glass, so fuchsia color, the third cup I have in I'd like to, yes, I have many lessons on YouTube and Patreon on how to make pressed flowers in milk, how to make tabletops in milk, how to make colored or dark tabletops, meaning the dye here can be absolutely anything. Now look at the type of folds or flexible glass that were made. 
see it's as if it's fabric, as if a bag is made of fabric. This actually has a kind of charm, which is why I wanted to make my next bag with silk. I'm doing ombre quite... I'm not pouring to the thickness. This is an artistic resin. Volume isn't filled with it. This resin acts as a layer. It acts as a base. I place the pressed flowers on it face up, not face down in reverse, but face up because the front of my bag will be like this, what I'm looking at now, because on the back there will be such folds. I won't cover them up. I carefully smooth the transition with a spatula so that there's no clear boundary between the two resins. And that too. It's important because it's really appealing aesthetically. It'll look unpleasant in the end, so please be careful smoothing it out at this point to avoid any cobwebs. I'm choosing flat dried flowers, some leaves dried in silica gel by myself, and some ordered dried flowers. I'm very proud of one of the dryers. It's a heather brush, I found it, and my subscribers confirmed it's heather. It's very straightforward to dry. Even on its own, in silica gel, it doesn't lose color and looks very impressive. I also bought these, what's the correct name? Over there on the left are the red ones. Overall, I bought these dried flowers for decor at the store. They also look super cool in resin, but check beforehand if they're dyed. Usually they are, and in resin they can make a mess. Here I arranged all my dried flowers. They're as saturated as possible from the bottom, the first layer, let them dry. We don't pour all the dried flowers at once. The first layer is dry, you see. This is already the second stage, the next day. And now I'm mixing the liquid resin, following the first principle, but my transition will be from transparent to light fuchsia, so as not to cover the dried flowers. Yes, but I still made the transition not purely transparent. I'm pouring them. I want them to look like they're immersed in the color. So for every 250 grams of resin, I also color just a knife tip's worth, a drop of pasty fuchsine pigment so as not to cover the color. You see, it's translucent. And I'd like to repeat, dried flowers are poured in two stages. The first substrate, the arrangement with by the way, I made the next correct strip for the bag, purely without flowers, only resin. I didn't film this in the video, I'm just saying it so you know. And now the most fun part, demolding. Don't take an example from me. Please put on gloves, gloves that are really rough, which would protect your hand because resin is sharp. Cutting it all will take quite a long time, even though it comes off from the flexible glass quite well. But from this plastic strip, you will have to exert efforts. And before pouring, by the way, you can sprinkle these places with a wax separator. Then it will be easier to remove. So as you can see, I made a wider strip and with a construction hairdryer at a low temperature so that the temperature was warm but not burning. I heat up the strip and lay it out according to the shape of my two plates. It's very important, listen, at a non-hot temperature, take a bit more time on this than you would like to, but heat it well, but very carefully so as not to melt the resin like paraffin, otherwise it will crack. Yes, I cut at the handle joint. Also, I heat it up with a hairdryer and cut it off with a utility knife. If I need to sand somewhere, I take sandpaper and sand it. By the way, I did it here without a sander, just with this sandpaper sheet, P3002380, before finishing. I polished it. Now the most enjoyable and monotonous task, attaching these parts. If my plate was narrower, I would have simply sunk it in from above, but I have a fairly wide plate and I sunk the side plates inside. Now this gap is being closed with UV resin. I have resin from the Resin Pro company, and I especially make it in resin to make the bond better, to cover the finish later with. Heavily apply deluxe resin over the entire surface and closing the side walls. Then it won't spill inside because the adhesive can still let resin through, so it's better. I've chosen UV resin for myself and it acts quickly, so I don't have to wait for too long. My favorite is the finish before coating. Finishing, I sanded it with P320 sandpaper, degreased it with alcohol wipes, applied thick resin and let it cure a bit. Now, I'm immediately sealing it. See, it's dripping. I sealed one side of the bag and also I've sanded the edge as well so the caramel edge wasn't sharp and choppy, but the resin converged well and didn't stumble on this side. I'm deflating bubbles with a torch and now I'm going to air out my handbag that turned out super light. The side parts are quite thin 
and the side itself, which I filled separately, is also thin. So it's hollow inside and lightweight. For those interested as for how heavy it is, I have even more lessons on Patreon. Come subscribe. All lessons are step by step and detailed. And I want to know your opinion on this experiment. Have a great mood. If you want to repeat it, write and I'll tell you. I'll answer all your questions if I forgot to include any videos here. Bye.